Hello, New Year 7 and parents, and welcome to our virtual transition presentation. Under normal circumstances, you'll be sat here in the main hall at Oakwood High School, probably on a very hot June summer's evening, waiting to get out back into the fresh air. However, this is the next best thing we can do. So from the comfort of your homes, I hope for the next few minutes, I'll be able to take you through the expectations for September. My name's Chris Eccles, and I'm the head of school. Here at Oakwood, our motto is inspired to achieve. It's excellence in all that we do, and excellence in all that we seek to do. We want our young people to come here, be successful, and be the best versions of themselves. The vision will be supported by raising the aspirations for all, which will raise the attainment for all. Whether you're a new Year 7 pupil, in Year 11, or even a member of staff here at Oakwood High School, we want all our members of our school community to be successful. We also have traditional values in a modern world. We appreciate the importance of relationships and respect. In 2016, Oakwood was graded as good, a good school with outstanding leadership and management by Ofsted. However, I think what is more important is the ethos that drives what we do in the school on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a real strong emphasis on respect for all, forging strong, supportive relationships between adults and pupils, and as a result, maximising their opportunity to succeed. It's really important that each and every one of us makes the most of every learning opportunity, remembering that every lesson is important. We provide our young people with high quality learning, and that has even continued during this lockdown period, where we've continued to interact on a daily basis and provide home learning to ensure that young people have the opportunity to make some progress and learn during these difficult times. Transition this year is unavoidably going to be very different. And unfortunately, we won't be able to have you in the building before you hopefully come to us at the beginning of September. It will be a different provision, but it also is going to be a priority. Our focus will be on a calm and settled start in September, making sure that your child feels part of the school, that our staff get to know the pupils as quickly as possible so that we can support them and make them feel part of the Oakwood family. We know that starting a learning journey with care, support and guidance is the recipe to future success. We base everything that we do here at Oakwood around the five R's. Respect, responsibility, resourcefulness, resilience, and reflection. We want our young people to be honest, trustworthy, interdependent with each other, collaborate, empathize, and listen, to take responsibility for themselves, their own learning, be accountable, but also responsible for making good decisions and being good citizens. Being resourceful, asking the right questions, imagining, reasoning, and using a whole range of resources to find solutions to problems. We want them to be resilient, of course, and I think these current times have really tested all of our levels of resilience. We want them to be able to persevere when learning is tough, see failure as the first step in learning in order for them to be successful. We also want them to be reflect, reflect, reflectful in their planning and in their evaluating in order for them to make much better progress. In September, and for the next five years, we have some key focus. The basics around uniform, good discipline, attendance and punctuality, the opportunity that presents itself at open to be successful and achievement. I also think 
there's a real focus in September of people feeling safe, supported, and part of our school community. That goes not just for our year sevens, but for all our pupils as they return after this difficult time. Around school, there are numerous posters that remind our pupils about our expectations. There are five key ones. First time, every time, following instructions. Being on time. Being respectful of each other. Being prepared with the right equipment. And completing work to the best of their ability. If pupils can meet these five expectations, that is the recipe for success. Of course, if they don't, we have a series of consequences that we work our way through. But always at the heart of the, that, that consequence system is making sure what we do is right for that child and working with that individual to get it right. When new people do get it right and are successful, we reward them, whether that's through verbal praise or higher level awards, such as the Head Teacher Award. We also have expectations around the corridors. These may be modified in September to take into account social distancing. At the moment, we operate a one-way system. But in basics, we want pupils to walk on the left and not run. Talk on corridors, not shout. Follow instructions first time, every time. Respect the building by putting things like litter in the bin, not chewing gum. And only walk in small groups, particularly in pairs on the stairs. These are really important to create a safe, calm, respectful environment where everyone can flourish and succeed. To support your child further, we have our pastoral structure. It's made up of four houses, Boston, Hoover, Keppel and Wentworth. It's a vertical tutor system operating in this house system. Each house has nine tutor groups with a mixture of pupils from year seven to ten. Your child will be allocated a personal learning tutor who they will see at the start of each day in tutor time. Tutors are a good first point of contact if your child has any concerns. Your child's tutor will make contact with you soon and you'll find out your child's house. Heads of house can also be contacted if you have more serious concerns. Our subjects are divided into learning zones. There are six learning zones, Communicate, which is English, Modern Foreign Languages, Film Studies, and English as an additional language. Investigate, which is Science and Maths. Explore, Humanities, RS, and Computer Science. Perform, PE, Drama, Music, and Health and Social Care. Create, Arts, Graphics, Textiles, DT, Food, Engineering. And our Integrate department, that provide additional specialist support to ensure that all pupils are fully integrated into school life. The school day starts at 8.40. Pupils are expected to be in tutor time at 8.40 and there's a 30 minute tutor every day where pupils will take part in a range of different activities as a group. At the end of each half term, there are the house activities and games and house competitions which pupils really look forward to getting involved in. At 9.10 is lesson one, and these lessons last for 75 minutes, allowing for some real deep learning to take place. Lesson two is 10.25 to 11.40, and then we have a break for 30 minutes, where it's an opportunity for children to get their food and also obviously use the toilet. Lesson three is from 12.10 to 1.25, then there is a second break for another 30 minutes, and then we have lesson four from 1.55 to, uh, to 3.10. And at 3.10, that's when our extracurricular activities take place. The school building opens up from 7.30 a.m. and pupils enter using the end pupil entrance on Moorgate Road. And the building closes at 4 p.m. unless pupils are taking part in sport or musical rehearsals. Pupils can wait for their parents inside the pupil entrance. When pupils are arriving or leaving school and crossing Moorgate Road, they should always use the school crossing. Parents can use the bus bay at the front of school to park, but mustn't park on the double yellow lines and should not also enter the, up the school drive uh, and drop pupils off outside of school. Food, very important subject for our, 
our pupils. Breakfast is served from 8am in the dining room and food is also served at both break times in the dining room and the main hall. A full meal costs £2.40, but this may vary depending on what options young people take. Pupils can also bring a packed lunch if they require. Payments can be made by cash, parent pay, uh, or using the biometric fingerprint system. It's fair to say that using parent pay, parents will not only be able to upload money onto their uh, child's account, you'll also be able to see exactly how much they're spending, what they're spending it on, and can also put a cap on how much they spend on a daily basis. We try to keep our uniform at Oakwood High School very, very simple. We do that because we want to make it affordable, easy to understand, and reduce the conflict at the start of the day over how to wear uniform correctly. We expect them to wear full length black trousers or black skirts worn at a modest length. And in 2020, 21, in the guidance, we said that the skirt should be no shorter than knee length. There should be no jeans or tracksuit bottoms. Plain black leggings, if they're worn, must be worn with a modest skirt. We have a plain black blazer with the Oakwood High School crest, and this is worn inside the building at all times. Under the blazer is a plain collared white shirt that must also be tucked in at all times. Every pupil will receive an Oakwood tie, and that tie will have a diff slightly different colour on to denote which house they are in. Plain black hijab may be worn, but the school shirt and tie must also be visible. Sensible, serviceable black shoes or trainers, no coloured laces, logos, stripes, soles or flashes should be visible and boots are not acceptable. Footwear must extend above the ankle bone will be classified as a boot. We try to be fair and reasonable and on the whole our young people really respond to what we do with uniform. Where there are issues and where there are problems, we work with them and their families to make sure we can get that resolved quickly and that there is no interruption to their learning as a result of not meeting our uniform expectations. There is also the option of wearing a grey v-neck jumper or cardigan with the Oakwood High School logo. And here's an example of some of our pupils wearing the uniform. Our P uniform is also very simple. There's a navy blue polo shirt with the school logo, black shorts, navy blue socks, black tracksuit bottoms, a black jumper or hoodie, trainers, football boots are optional but are recommended for some of the winter activities on the grass. And all our uniform is available at Pinders and Johnny Deeds. We have been in contact with our suppliers and understand that although production has been somewhat affected by the recent crisis, they are going to be catching up and will be able to provide uniform for all our pupils that need it over the next few months. In order to remain connected with yourselves, with parents to update them about pupils' progress, we hold two tutor review days and then corresponding parents' evenings. These are dis the tutor review days are disaggregated days where you will book appointments throughout the day on a time slot somewhere between 12 and 6.30. The first of the tutor review days is in November and that will be followed by a parents' evening in December. The second tutor review day is in April and then a week later will be the parents' evening. The tutor review day gives you the opportunity to speak to your personal learning tutor about your child's progress across a range of subjects and at the parents' evening it's an opportunity to actually speak to the individual subject specialists in areas that you may want some more information or have some concerns. We're very unique at Oakwood in that we provide each and every one of our pupils with an electronic device. All pupils in year seven will receive a Chromebook. This is a great piece of equipment in terms of its use, both in school and at home. We are able to control what young people are able to access on that to make it both safe and productive. From the week commencing the 14th of September, the Chromebooks will be distributed to pupils throughout that week. And details of how we're going to do that will be sent to you in September. We also use a programme called Go for Schools. 
This is an online program where pupils and parents can access subject progress, attendance and behaviour information. It allows you to see live data on assessment, on attendance, on their behaviour and their achievements throughout the day. It also shows homework, what's been set, what the task is and when it's due. Where pupils are given reward points for positive behaviour, you can see that straight away on a timeline. On each, on each day, staff put more positive logs onto that system than they do negative logs. And it's a real good opportunity for parents to see how their child's doing and be able to initiate those conversations about their experience in school and how they're progressing. In the building, we have some general rules. First of all, we expect full uniform to be worn around school and the all outdoor coats should be removed when they enter the building. They should bring full equipment, pens, pencils, rulers and Chromebooks in a school bag. It's so important that young people are equipped for the school day as this removes one of the initial barriers to learning by not having that equipment with them. We understand that young people have mobile phones and have a need to bring them to school. However, when they're in school, they have no need to use them and they should be placed in their bags and switched off. We don't accept pupils chewing in school and any food that is eaten should be done so in the dining room or designated areas and not in classrooms or on the corridor. Attendance and punctuality are critical. And even though in these difficult times pupils haven't been in school, I think it's really important to realise that those pupils that have attended on a day-to-day -day basis with their home learning, by engaging with that, will be the pupils that have learnt more and are going to be in a better position when they return to school. There's no substitute, however, for being in school with class teachers on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, sometimes young people fall ill, and if they do, obviously parents should contact the school to let us know. Pupils who arrive after 8.40 bell will be expected to attend a 20-minute detention at the end of the school day, and parents will receive a message about that through in touch. There are rewards for attendance, and those that make the most improvement, as well as those that attend the most, will be recognised at the end of each half term. Our attendance team can be contacted both by telephone and through the attendance at oakwood.ac email. If a child falls ill during the day, we have a medical room, our first aid room, which is located at the attendance office. If you've got concerns already, or your child has a medical condition, obviously you will notify us of that, and we can store any necessary medicines in school for them to take during the day. If your child requires a medical appointment, just make sure that you inform us of that prior to them going and before you pick them up um, at, the, uh, at the appropriate time. As I said before, we're very lucky in that we've got a brand new school building and we're very proud of our building and the opportunities it presents in terms of learning. At the end of this presentation, Mr. Willie has done a virtual tour of the school for you to watch and get a flavour of what it's like in the different spaces around the school. So, who are the key people to make contact with, not just for the transition period from September, but for the next five years? The most, and one of the most critical people is the personal learning tutor. Then there's the heads of house. It may be, if it's something more related to a subject issue, or concern that you contact the subject teachers. There are the wider concerns to the heads of learning zone or members of our ARC team. During this transition period, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask those using the transitions at oakwood.ac email. Each week, on a designated day, each pupil is involved in a house assembly. On Monday, it's Keppel with Mr. Liversidge, Tuesday, Huber with Mr. Jones, Wednesday, Wentworth with Miss Bowater, and Thursday, Boston with Mr. Bennett. So let me introduce you to some of the key staff that you'll meet when you first come here to Oakwood High School. Many of you will know Mr. Naisbitt, our head teacher, who is also the CEO of the Inspire Trust. Next year, we'll be spending some time at Oakwood, but also we'll be dividing his time between other schools in the Trust such as TRC and Sitwell Juniors. Then there's myself, Mr. Eccles. I'll be head of school and I'm running Oakwood on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And one of my assistant head teachers who oversees all of the pastoral system within the school is Mr. Willie. Miss Tank is also an assistant head teacher and she's currently supporting Miss Mitchell with both the transition program, but also uh, she's acting as Senko in Miss Grice's absence uh, as Miss Grice has just uh, recently given birth to her first child. Miss Mitchell's job is also to coordinate and run the ARC team. Miss Reardon is our attendance officer uh, and she is part of the pastoral support team and she manages that team. And Miss Morehouse is our exams and data manager. So I'm now going to introduce you to some of our heads of house. First of all, Mr. Livisage of Keppel. Hi. Hi, Year 7. I hope you're all OK and looking forward to coming to Elkwood. My name is Mr. Livisage. I'm head of Keppel House and I teach PE in English. When things get back to normal and we can all be in school, you'll hear me talk a lot about being the best version of yourself. I say this a lot to pupils in Keppel because I believe that if you're always trying your best and being the best version of you, then you'll be successful, which is what we all want for you. I wish that things were different and we could be meeting in person, but for now, I hope that this video and the other things we are sending help you to get ready to join us at Oakwood. I'm looking forward to meeting you all and supporting you through five successful years. Take care. Now, Mr Jones of Hoover. Good morning, New Year 7s. My name is Mr Jones and I'm just contacting you to let you know that we can't wait to meet you uh, when you come up to Oakwood. Uh, I'm the head of Hoover House, uh, so clearly that's the best house. I've had messages from children this morning telling me what I should say and one of them said that one of the best things about Hoover is that all the children look after each other as well as the teachers. We've got some fantastic tutors and also we're known as the house that gives. So we've done all sorts of interesting and exciting work for charity. So that's something you can look forward to. We're great at sport. We win lots of competitions. So I'm really looking forward to meeting you and I hope you'll have a lovely time when you come to meet us up in Oakwood as soon as possible. Now it's Miss Bowater, Head of Wentworth. Hi there, Rookwood's New Year 7. My name is Mrs Bowater and I'm head of Wentworth House. Myself and your tutors are very excited to welcome you into the Wentworth family. Oakwood High School is a lovely school and Wentworth is a wonderful house. We strive to work hard and to be kind to one another and we are very excited to meet you. Next is Mr Bennett of Boston. Hello Y6, we're looking forward to seeing you in uh, September. My name is Mr Bennett, I'm Head of House for Boston. As one of my cheeky year 11s say, I put the boss in Boston. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing you. One of the things you'll find out about Boston is that we're very competitive and we love people who give it their all. See you in September. And last but not least, Miss Mitchell, our leader of the ARC team. Hello Y6, my name is Miss Mitchell. Um, transition this year looks a little bit different, however, we do look forward to welcoming you to Oakwood. Uh, when you arrive, please pop along to ARC and say hello. So finally, here at Oakwood High School, we're about not just good, but getting better and being the best. We thrive on good relationships because we know that through good relationships, that pupils make better progress. And if they make better progress and engage more in their learning, then they can be the best they can be. As I said right at the beginning, it's so disappointing that we can't be physically with you in the building and starting our proper transition programme. I hope that you've learned a little bit more about the school through this presentation. And we are really looking forward to seeing you as soon as we possibly can. In the meantime, stay safe and take care. Thank you. Hi Year 7, my name is Mr Willie, I'm Assistant Head Teacher for Behaviour and Attitudes. I also oversee the Transition Programme. We thought we'd put together some video clips so you can have a virtual tour of what the building looks like inside. I'm sorry about the shaky camera work and I hope you enjoy the commentary. As the sign says, welcome to Oakwood High School, this is the dining room. If we make our way down here you can see the barriers, you can see this is the area where you queue up for your hot meals and the canteen is over there. On the far side near the doors you can get cold food and drinks. As we scan across here 
Behind the tables is another queue for cold food, sandwiches and drinks. We're on the ground floor. In front of us we've got the pupil entrance. This is where you will come into school every morning and you will leave school at the end of day. This is the create corridor where your technology subjects happen and the toilets are here which you can use at break times. More create classrooms and on the ground floor you'll find the head of house office which is here where your head of house will be from time to time. We also go in here where you could come to talk to somebody in the attendance and first aid team. Hello, I'm Miss Reardon. Welcome to our office. Hi, I'm Miss Redden and I'll be here to help you with any first aid concerns if you're feeling unwell. Hello, I'm Mrs Lonsdale. I can also help you with attendance and first aid. This is our new outdoor area, which has just been built. A nice sheltered area on a rainy day where people can come and eat their food and talk to the friends. If you move down this way, you'll see the entrance onto the Create Corridor. This is the entrance that you will go through if you are out on the top field for Fit to Learn or the green space. And this is the gate around the back of the sports hall that you will come down and then you can enter just before the start of your lesson through the Create Corridor. I'm now stood on the central staircase for floor one. We also have two staircases either end of the building, which go from zero floor up to the second floor. If we move down to the corridor here, we can see we have the Communicate Learning Zone, which is our English and Modern Foreign Languages subjects. We also have the Integrate Learning Zone and Room 114. A lot of supportive work takes place in this room and some smaller rooms at the side. This is also a room where you can report any incidents at break time. Down here we have the Explore Learning Zone with Humanities, Computer Science and Religious Studies. We also have the toilets here on floor one which you can use at break time. This is the Perform Corridor which is the only corridor that makes its way out to the green space, effectively going up the hill. On the left we have Mr Eccles' office. As we're moving into the performed corridor we have our music lessons, we have PE lessons, we've got health and social care and we've also got our drama lessons. The LRC, our Learning Resource Centre, which is open at break times and also before and after school, which is effectively our library, is on the left. We have lockers for pupils who graduate at year 9, 10 and 11. We have our main hall where we will have our assemblies in the morning, depending on what house you are in. We also, as you can see, have dining room tables because we eat in here at break times. We're going to make our way down the PE changing rooms. We have drama on the right hand side here and the changing rooms are down here and if you have a PE lesson you go through the doors and stand outside. The boys changing rooms are there and the girls changing rooms are down the far end. This is our green space where people can come out at break times. Activities can take place out here as well. And we also have the Fit to Learn gate for those people who want to go up the drive onto the tennis courts or in nice weather onto the football pitches and play lots of sport. Those people who are finished at Fit to Learn will come down the drive and they'll make their way through the gate you won't be allowed to go through in that direction to ease traffic flow and they make the way down here and the gate is open 
and you walk round the path right down to the bottom where you have the covered area down to the create entrance. If you have a PE lesson, you line up in front of the initials of your teacher, they take the register and then you make your way into PE. We're now back on the perform corridor. And we have the sports hall on our right hand side. On the left hand side is the main hall. I want to take you into the sports hall where we also have parents evening. Lovely brand new sports hall, really good facilities. Still on the perform corridor and our fourth set of stairs, which will only go up to floor one. We go down here. And this will amaze you because it brings you out in the dining room. The dining room queue will snake round there, particularly on Fridays for Chicken Nugget Day. Everybody gets served. The reception is here for adults. And we make our way back down there. At the end of the day, you'll leave through the pupil entrance and exit. On to Moorgate Road. That gate there is open till 8.40 in the morning. If you're after 8.40, then you have to walk along the front of school, up the steps, come down to here, and you'll be met by a member of the attendance team. Anyone who has a late log will have a detention after school for 20 minutes and parents will be contacted. I've now moved to the end stairwell, close to the hospital, and I'm on floor two. I'm just going to pan around here so you get a good view of behind the sports hall. If you're on the green space or fit to learn, you'll be coming down that way at the end of break. We've also got the seated area that's covered outside the dining room. As we make our way onto the corridor, this is the investigate corridor. Subjects science and maths. So I hope you found that useful. Don't worry, we won't be testing you on where the rooms are around the building, but I think you've got a good idea of how we are at Oakwood. We're really looking forward to seeing you. Take care and we'll see you soon.